Hi folks, today I'm here at the Elements Gathering in August of 2014. I'm with Dan Sainty, who came all the way from Australia to be at the Elements. And we heard interesting stories about Dan, so I wanted to talk to you today. He grew up in the bush in Australia, and uh, how did that all begin? Tell us your background in Australia. Okay, so roughly when I was four years old, we traveled to Australia. That's my mother and I. Okay. And we were looking for, for land. Um, Coming from where in Australia? We, we came from a place called Bateman's Bay. It's a Bateman's very small Bay. town. Okay. Um, it's actually Fisherman's Paradise in Bateman's Bay. Okay. You're talking 100 people. Okay, small town. Yeah, but we didn't have the acreage, we didn't have land, and my mother had um, ideas for self-sufficiency okay. and a different... Ideas, he said, I, but it sounded different. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And when I was five years old, we found this land, and um, the nearest neighbor was, you know, 25 miles away. So you went from a small town to, to very rural, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and where'd you go to school there? Well, my education was growing up in the bush. There was no okay. school. There was no radio reception. There was no TV signal. No electricity? No services whatsoever. Okay. When we came to the property, the only thing that was there was a concrete slab. I see. What'd you do for water? Well, uh, originally, we, the first thing we looked for in property was spring-fed water okay. and creeks. That okay. was very important. Um, and originally, that's what we did until we got a roof on. Okay. And since we had a roof, we never had a problem. We always had plenty of rainwater. Oh, I see. You yeah. collected your rainwater. But yes. water is obviously your number one priority. Yeah, water and fertile soil. And fertile soil, okay. And, you know, my mother didn't really have any practical knowledge. It was a little bit of theory with some permaculture design courses. So basically, you plopped yourself onto the land and you mm -hmm. learned as you went. And everything went wrong. And everything went wrong. Everything okay. went wrong. All right. You know, when... when the soil was fertile, but then, you know, as the more abundance we got, the wildlife diversity increased. And but in a sense, everything going wrong were your opportunities for your lessons, right? That's the how you Greatest learned. education. And when greatest I meet, education. When I meet other natural builders, permaculture designers, they, they don't have that. You know, you can't well, no, get... No, they don't have the practical background they don't, of failing and learning through their... Exactly. Failures, yeah. That was the, the greatest teacher. Yeah, yeah. So, so you grew up learning all the bush skills. Tell me what you do today. You, you, uh, you came here, you seem to be a very skilled technician in a lot of the outdoor crafts. Well, yeah, I, I really realized how valuable that was when I left. I left when I was like 15 years old uh -huh. to train martial arts full time. Okay. I'm a Brazilian really? Jiu-Jitsu black belt now. Really? I own okay. an academy. And, um, What's the name of the academy? It's the Dojo in Bondi Junction. And that's in Australia? Yeah. Okay, so people can look that up if they go to Australia? Yeah. All right, say, say it again? The Dojo. The Brazilian. Dojo. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and what style? Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and Jiu -Jitsu. mixed martial arts. Okay, and you told me an interesting story about uh, being in Norway. What would you do there? Okay, so recently I, I uh, apprenticed myself to Norway's number one lockpicking master. And okay. that is the Scandinavian joining technique. Okay. His name is Henning Ulstad. And, and what was he joining? Log cabins. Log cabins, okay. So yeah. we learned the secrets of the Scandinavian log cabins and why their cabins last for 800 years and why it, their joints are seamless and the design behind it. We were looking at a picture and one lady thought that uh, that Dan made lean-tos. These are not lean-tos. These are like high-quality <laughs> cabins. So um, if people want to talk to you and reach you and learn about your skills, how would they do so? They, you could contact me if you have trouble, but how would people reach you? You can find me on Facebook um, under the name Mutual Welfare. Mutual welfare. That's okay, correct. very good. Mutual welfare. Yeah. Hey, that's all of our time for today. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.